Hey guys, it's your girl Erin here. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, still rolling. Uh, we're going to talk about abdominal ma uh, massage and abdominal <laughs> trigger points today. And you've gone through all the muscles in your uh, outline for today. And we're going to talk about a couple of the ones that aren't on the palpation video. So we're going to talk about the diaphragm. We're going to talk about subclavius, and we are going to talk about pec major and minor, even though they are on the palpation videos, just to show you how to treat them and maybe an alternate uh, place client position for that. So let's talk about the diaphragm first. The rest of the muscles you see um, the palpation videos for, you just have to superimpose a Travel trigger point release on those. And um, if you have any questions, then let me know. So Paige, I'm just going to drape your abdomen here. Okay. So I've placed a chest drape on Paige already in anticipation of treating this muscle. I talked about it in our lecture about the dome shape of the diaphragm. It really goes um, from the costal margins up. Uh, and remember, it has, um, it has direct contact with the thoracic organs and also the abdominal organs. So the stomach lays right underneath the diaphragm, the liver lays right underneath the diaphragm, um, right up in the rib cage, and then the lungs and especially the pericardium of the heart has a very direct relationship with the diaphragm. Okay, can I get you to take a deep breath in? So all of these trigger point release uh, use oil. So make sure you warm up the areas really well. All of these areas are highly sensitive. All the m muscles that you're working on today are in really highly sensitive areas. They're in very ticklish areas. If your client is too ticklish for you to palpate in this area, do some relaxing massage first. Maybe work on their back, do a lot of rocking, get them used to your touch, make sure they're breathing, get them, instruct them to kind of relax a little bit and then go and do some of the muscles that are a little bit more sensitive and might be ticklish for them. So I'm warming up the abdomen. I'm gonna do some thumb kneading underneath the rib cage here to kind of warm up the diaphragm. The diaphragm, you may or may not be able to palpate it on your client. It is really in fact way up here into the rib cage. So the only way we can kind of access it even a little bit is through tucking under the costal margins here. So you can, Paige just moved her hands up to her chest. That's actually really helpful um, to move breast tissue out of the way. So you can ask your client to do that um, just to help you feel more comfortable and help them feel more comfortable when you're working in these positions. Just instruct them on what to do. The more communicative you are, the better. So I might even do some uh, rib raking in this area here to help warm up the intercostals and just get the fascia of this area moving before I decide to go into the diaphragm. So Paige, I'll get you to take a nice deep breath in and exhale. So you can see on her exhale, I'm able to tuck up under the rib cage, the costal margins a little bit and just keep breathing normally. So you may be coming along the costal origin here and you may find a tender spot. Or maybe not. Sometimes I like to palpate a couple of times. Deep breath in. Exhale. So let's say we're going along here and we feel a point. So let's say it's something here. Then we start our questions. Is this tender here? A little bit. And on a scale of zero to 10, zero being no pain at all, and 10 like putting your hand on a hot burner, where would you place this point? About a three. Let's say it's a three. Does it radiate anywhere? A little bit out along the ribs, down towards the side. Okay. And I'll get you to take a few deep breaths here. So I've asked three of the four questions in sequence. And now we're holding a static compression. There's no way I'd be using 30 pounds of pressure in here whatsoever. So 
So general rule of thumb, 30 to 60 seconds, or I would say between three and six deep breaths. Uh, and then ask again, is it, is it releasing at all? Yep. Where would you put it now on the pain scale? Zero. At a zero, so it's gone. So at this point I can come out nice and slow, get her to take a deep breath, and then we are going to flush, flush, flush the area. So Travel says you can use heat. So we could have used heat on the abdomen before. We could use heat afterwards. If we use heat afterwards, we definitely have to still flush out. This, the principles of hydrotherapy still apply. Even if you're in, incorporating them in a trigger point treatment, you'd have to flush the area out really, really well. Um, so that's a trigger point release on the diaphragm. So try playing around with that. If you guys um, aren't sure about the obliques or the rectus abdominis or the transverse abdominis, let me know. I, I gave you guys um, a YouTube video to find the transverse abdominis. Um, when you're working the, in the abdomen, you have to be just very careful because of all the organs. It's not the same as pressing down on the back. There is so much more going on in here. So you have to start to learn to figure out what layer you're in. So remember to resist the action of the muscle that you think you're on. So if I'm working kind of in the area lateral to the linea alba, then I might think I'm in the rectus abdominis. And um, to ensure, to, to figure out if I am, I could get Paige to just lift your head, Paige. So as soon as she, good, and you can release. Don't, don't make them sit up like that for a really long time. But as soon as she flexes her abdomen and flexes the trunk, then, um, then her rectus abdominis contracts. If I wanted to figure out if it was the external obliques on the same side I'm working on, so I'm working on her right side, I could get her to, so what Paige, what I'd like you to do is almost do a crunch and bring your right shoulder towards your left hip. Good, and relax. So I could get her to do that. So when she brings her right shoulder to her left hip, it's going to contract the external obliques on the right side and the internal obliques on the left side and vice versa. So if I wasn't sure if it was external or internal on this side, I could get her to bring this shoulder up or I could get her to bring the left shoulder up to get the internal obliques. So make sure you understand the action of the muscle so that you can resist the action of the muscle to determine what fibers you're on. Okay.